Wow, it's great to be here. So you ever had that sinking feeling? You know, your laboratory's a mess. The students are clamoring at the door. That paper is half finished on your desk. And your personal life is starting to reflect your professional life. Then you get a little help, right? You get a little help. You start swimming strong, clean strokes. You're working hard, but making progress. And every once in a while, you float along, enjoying the experience. So that is my life in water sciences. Sinking, swimming, and floating. And it is my family and my friends, my colleagues, my mentors who have always helped me when I needed a helping hand. Now, I'm a water pollution microbiologist, and yes, my dad did call me queen of the latrine. <laughs> I don't know if that influenced my career path, but basically what I do is I follow the feces around. So wherever feces go, that's where I go. And you can imagine that does uh, uh, send me to some pretty interesting places. I grew up in the desert in Southern California. And I was probably like most kids in the United States. I took my tap water and my toilet for granted. My parents supported all of us in whatever we wanted to do. So I was a geeky kid, long legs, right? But I had a chemistry set. I had my ant farm. And my parents also encouraged us to volunteer. And I can remember that first glimpse into the mysterious laboratory while I was volunteering as a candy striper in a hospital. So off I went to college and I thought, well, I'll join the medical profession. But in my first class, I looked down the microscope and I was hooked. There lay hidden a whole microscopic world. We were studying disease. How could something so small cause such havoc? So I said, well, I'm going to be a microbiologist now. But what kind of microbiologist? I went off to the University of Wyoming to do my master's work. And there, <laughs> yeah, Wyoming. From Arizona, California, Arizona, now I'm really cold. <laughs> I studied a bee disease, a disease never seen in the United States. I was studying with a botanist, a mycologist an entomologist. How did the disease get here? How was it spread? So I was trained as an environmental microbiologist. And I got my first job. So excited. I was in an environmental microbiology laboratory at a sewage treatment plant. Yes, great. How fascinating, really. Water from a community was used to bring the waste, wash the waste away from the community to a treatment plant. The water was treated, and I was testing it for bacteria to see whether it was safe enough to be discharged. I wanted to know where the samples came from. So Sam, a seasoned operator, got stuck with me. Now Sam knew a lot, and he was quite a character, and he took me all over the plant, showed me where all the samples were coming from. And I remember the first time I went into the sewer and into the sewer shed. Sam is sitting on the back of the truck, smoking a cigarette. I am putting on my boots. I got my lab coat on, buttoning up my lab coat. I got my gloves on. I'm getting my sterile bottle. He's like, are you ever going to be ready to take the sample? And by the way, I've never been sick a day in my life. <laughs> So how does an environmental microbiologist learn about sewage treatment and learn about engineering? Well, you have somebody like Sam helping you. I went on to the University of Arizona to do my PhD. Chuck Gerba, another character, was my major advisor. We had a lot of fun. And I was studying viruses because bacteria weren't sufficient to really understand the pathogenic risk. And there I met another mentor of mine. Some of you know this uh, organism, a little tiny protozoan parasite called Cryptosporidium. 
Yeah, it was new, a new disease. It was fecal oral. I got my first grant studying cryptosporidium. Walter Jakubowski of EPA was my project officer, and he taught me a lot about running a research program. And he's still a mentor and friend today. I went all over the US sampling for cryptosporidium, and every place I went, managers, operators, engineers, were willing to take me around, show me their facility, show me their watershed. And yeah, I learned a lot from cryptosporidium. So I had my PhD. I had two kids, and I had a box full of equipment, lots of equipment. I had pumps, I had filters, I had tubes, I had flow meters. I was sampling viruses and, and protozoa and parasites. And of course, I made it a family affair. So field sampling was a family affair. And I still can picture my mother carrying one of my pumps with the help from my sister, down to the Emerald Pool in Zion National Park to look for cryptosporidium. So we took a lot of samples on vacation and went to a lot of wastewater treatment plants. Yeah, you know, field sampling is like a vacation, so who wouldn't want a vacation with us? But I realized, you know, that I didn't actually understand the importance of what I was doing. I thought I could just go get my sample, run back to the laboratory, do my analysis, get my result, write my paper, and get it published. But I realized how important water was to the public. When you're out there sampling, lots of people come up to you. What are you doing there? What are you finding? What are you looking for? Are those critters going to make us sick? Where did they come from? What do we do to control them? I realized I really needed to answer some of these questions and be able to tell my science story, because ultimately, journalists showed up as well. So I began to collaborate. I collaborated and collaborated and collaborated. Anybody that would have me, I would ask them to work with me. It didn't matter. It was climatologists, hydrologists, ecologists, consulting engineering, operators, city managers, regulators, prof public health professionals. They taught me a lot. I learned to be a better microbiologist, a better teacher, a better communicator. You know, my associates and my students became my colleagues. My colleagues became my friends, and my friends became my mentors. And I went to my friends for a lot of advice about career choices and projects. I remember getting a call one time from a consulting engineering group that I was working with about joining them on a project in Singapore. Wow. I never thought I'd work clear across the world. I've been working there 18 years now. Yeah, floating along in a steamy and dreamy world. So all of this has brought me here to you. Um, I'm very proud to be part of this organization and part of the water profession. I'm proud to be a part of what you do, your dedication to your community and to your work. And I often get asked, do I think water is safer now? And I'm not so sure. There's a lot more people. There's a lot more sewage. There's a lot more animals. We've got floods. We have droughts. We have emerging contaminants. We are struggling with our infrastructure. I believe we were at a tipping point. And I'm really concerned about our rivers, our lakes, our coastal systems. We cannot walk away from this reality. I always get a sinking feeling when I walk into a community that's experienced an outbreak where people are sick. And you have to look in the eyes of parents who have lost their child. And this happens both here and in developing regions of the world. The rest of the world does not have access to toilets. They do not have safe rivers. They do not have water 24-7. What a luxurious life we lead. 
We cannot forget that what we do is so important to public health. And we need to look at these challenges together. I'm an optimist, and I know we have new water quality diagnostics. We have new treatment technologies. But we have the ability to collaborate together globally. For all of the young professionals here, I just want you to know the world needs you. They need your enthusiasm, your energy, your talents, your knowledge. We can just not solve these big problems by ourselves. So take those opportunities that your mentors provide for you. Walk through those doors. Immerse yourself in other disciplines. Share what you know. Learn what you don't know. Learn to communicate broadly and collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Some say uh, find your passion, but I say share your passion. And together, I believe we can create a world, a wonderful world of safe, clean water. Thank you. Thank you.